Samurai Warriors Katana for the Wii. I'm not going to go too much into the plot of this one because there are several campaigns and they're not that unique as far as the stories go. Basically, well, in one, you're out to be the best fighter in the land and so is one of your friends. In another, you're serving this guy who's building an empire. Yeah. Basically, you know, what I will say is that it takes place in, I think, feudal, I guess, Japan. And basically, the game is a rail shooter with a twist. You have a sword. And you use the Wiimote as the sword. And this isn't unique to this game, but it is one of the best approaches to it. I would still say that the best approach is Red Steel 2, but that game came later. I think two years later, or something. And this one has the distinct advantage over Red Steel 2 that you can play multiplayer. You know, you can play, I think it's maybe only two, but I mean, I played just yesterday, and it just, it is so much fun to play multiplayer on this, because basically, you know, split screen, and you can both do exactly the same things as you can in single player. You just can't particularly hurt the other player so much, and there are several ways to play multiplayer. There's one where you have to be the first to get 100 kills, there's one where you have to cross a bridge as the first one with a couple of annoying types trying to knock you down from it. There's one where you have to run back and forth and find a specific object that you're told to destroy and destroy as many of them of the objects that you're told. I mean, each time you get one object to go and destroy, you have to go and destroy that before the other one does. Then you both get a new object to go and destroy. You get the idea. And, yeah, anyway. For, as far as the single player goes, basically, the Wiimote is the sword, so you can, you know, move it side to side. You can stab with it, you know, take it back and do this. You can do downwards, which will knock them down. You can do upwards, which will knock them into the air, where you can hit them some more. And you don't only have a sword, you have other melee weapons. You just only have one per level. In multiplayer you can choose which one you want to use. In single player you usually can, but they aren't all available right from the start, of course. You know, like in most games, you get them as you go along, but it's fun the entire way. I, I couldn't put into words how much fun this was playing through, which is by now months ago, but It's just, th there are a couple of different things to the regular gameplay. Basically, the usual is a rail shooter, where you move through the levels and you use your melee weapon and the long-range weapon that you will also get. I will detail what both groups are, of, you know, what the specific weapons are in the two groups. And you have to take out everyone you come across. That's one way. There's another where you're riding a horse. This is by far the least interesting. It's partially broken, I would say. It's really not that well done. Yeah, it, it doesn't work. It's my experience, anyway. Then there's one where you do get to walk around and do the rail shooting. So you can also step backwards from enemies and, you know, face different ones. You know, you can turn to face someone else. There is... Yeah, that might actually pretty much be it. And then they do different things with it. Sometimes you have to find your way. You know, you yourself walking and, you know, there are time limits, there are boss fights, 
basically you always have at least a melee weapon and almost always also a long ranged weapon. You can block with your short range weapon, excuse me, and yes, I will detail some of the, all of the, basically there are eight total, there are four in both categories, each. You have the regular sword, which is a katana, which you can do the attacks I already described with. There is a spear, which is slower, but also more powerful, and it's better at finding the weak spot. And basically, you just stab with it. Yeah. Then there is a hammer, which you can hit several with. It's slow, but it's also powerful. And finally, the blades. This is essentially a freaking yo-yo with spikes on it. You attack the enemy by sending this thing out from your hand and swinging it. You're literally... I mean, you... you probably look like a retard doing it, but you'll also have fun. You swing like this and you can tilt it, you know, to be sideways or to be, you know, vertically, and it's just so much fun. It can also block, so, yeah. In fact, I think it sends the shots back into the faces of those who shoot at you, if you use it right. Then there are the long-range weapons. The first one is a bow, and this one is not that powerful, but you can also fire it several times. It's called a bow, but it looks like a crossbow, and you fire it several times before you have to reload it, so I really don't know what kind of weapon it actually is, but what the hey. You fire it several times before you reload, and then the reloading takes a couple of seconds. Then there is the gun, which is basically like a rifle, I don't know, musket kind of thing. It doesn't take very long to reload, but you do have to reload it for every uh, bullet. And every bullet is more powerful than the arrows of the bow. Then there is a cannon. This hits several people. It's slow. You have to time it right if your enemy is moving. And you can't aim it quite as far as the others. You also have to be careful about the aiming, but there is a really good system. Basically, you hold down the trigger key, which is, of course, the B, you know, your right index finger is right there on it, and you hold it down, and you get this highlighted area of where the cannonball is going to go. Once you release it, that's where it goes. You know, you aim. Yeah, you know, hold it down, aim, then you see where it'll go, release it, it'll go there. It'll just take a second or two to get there. And finally, we have the boomerang. And this is exactly what you think it is. You basically hold down the B button, and you do this or this, depending on which direction you want it to go. And yes, it flies, and yes, it comes back. And yes, it can hit them on the way back. Yes, all of these weapons, all eight of them, have their uses. There is not a single bad weapon in this game. They clearly put effort into this. They're just not all good for the same situations. Basically, they're all good for different situations. So you want to choose, you know, what kind of situation do I see myself getting into the most? You know, what do I think I will need the most? You know, the most versatile hand-to-hand -hand weapon is by far the sword, but it's also the weakest. The fastest distance weapon is by far the bow, but it's also the weakest, and once you do reload, it takes a couple of seconds. The, the campaigns will take a pretty decent amount of time. I wouldn't have thought that they could pull this off, but they did. It's a full-length video game, 
of a rail shooter. I mean, I haven't tried all the rail shooters out there, I'll admit, but most of them seem to be just the arcade kind of thing. I'm not, you know, disparaging that. That's a good thing. That's, you know, in the arcade, you don't want to be standing there for 20 hours, you know. But that's what most of them are, you know, including House of the Dead Overkill. I mean, that game does take time to beat, but still, you know, your average level, if you skip the cutscenes, takes 10 to 15 minutes, and there are only 7 levels. You know, there are 2 difficulty settings, but still, that's just 14 levels of 10 to 15 minutes each. That is not a lot. This game actually does take hours to complete. It really will take some time, and I can't speak for anyone else, but I enjoyed the crap out of almost all of it. Yes, there are some frustrating sequences, but in general, I just... it was so much fun. I just kept playing, and somehow they mixed it up enough that you never get bored of anything. You can replay any level that you want, and you can bring really cool weapons that you've unlocked later on in the game back to earlier levels in the game. Not always. Some of them are training kind of things, so you get the early weapon and you have to use that there, but most of the time you can choose exactly what you want to use in any level. Yeah, they really, really put effort into this. It's very clear and it's a surprisingly open, linear rail shooter. A couple of things more about the regular gameplay. Sometimes you have these sequences where you have to run, and you don't really control where you run. It does it on its own. You just have to move faster than in the regular rail shooting. And, you know, this is, again, it's like mini-games. There are... It's a game of a lot of mini-games, basically, with the main gameplay being the rail shooter sequences. Basically, you run by, you know, the Wiimote and the Nunchuck, you know, you do milk and the cow movement. And... One thing, though, I will say that some of the more specific weapons can be almost useless in a lot of the regular game. I I will say that, but you do kind of figure out which ones those are, you know, and there isn't a single weapon that there isn't some use for. You know, you just have to find the right levels to use that particular weapon, or that particular combination of weapons. The... In between levels, you get to restock, you get to upgrade your armor and your abilities, and basically you have, and you, you know, you earn sort of experience points, you know, it's, it's the full-on role-playing game element kind of thing. And you also have these four inventory slots where you can place rice balls, which will heal you, and there are also various objects that will give you a boost in some way, or hurt your enemy, you know, give them a negative boost, I guess, kind of thing. You choose exactly which level you want to play, but of course there is a linear progression with a story and voice acting, a little bit over the top a lot of the time, but hey. And one more thing about the gameplay is there is this, I don't know how to pronounce it, Musu, I guess. It's your super attack, and every short range weapon has one. You fill up a meter and you use, you know, the, the Musu. And it's basically super attacks for your melee weapons until the bar has yet again been drained, you know, in a limited amount of time, but it'll do a lot of damage. Of course you can't use it just any time, you know, it's not always good to use, of course, but these are really, really kick-ass movements. 
also about the RPG elements, you also have armor and special equipment that you can equip that, you know, again, gives you certain advantages or sometimes gives your enemies disadvantages. And I suppose that's basically what there is to say about the game. If you want a game with immersive sword play and you don't want to spring for a motion plus accessory, this is the one to get by far. And definitely if you want multiplayer because this is the only one this is the only immersive swordplay game I know of that has good multiplayer. Sonic and the Black Knight also has multiplayer, but like the regular game, it kind of sucks. Sonic in 3D, yeah, no. Anyway, that was... Well, real quick, I'll say, I think this is actually part of a series. I think Samurai Warriors is a series, but I don't know any of the other games, so I cannot comment on them. If you can recommend any, or there are any that you would really love for me to check out, be sure to let me know. That was my spoiler review of Samurai Wars Katana. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time.